Hey guys, it's Nicolette Simon with Remax. I recently did a question box on my Instagram story asking questions for a lender. So today I brought in a special guest, Fernando Diaz with Homebridge Financial. Fernando is someone that I have been doing quite a bit of business with for the last two years. Um, someone that I trust and someone that I trust with my clients. So we have a few questions for you, Fernando, if you want to introduce yourself and then we'll get started. Hi sure guys, hi, I'm Fernando Diaz with Homebridge Financial. I am a residential uh, mortgage banker and I have been doing this for approximately 26 years. Um, and that is it, basically my entire life since the day I graduated college. This is all I know. So that's that really for me. And that's why you're good at what you do. <laughs> well, I've done okay. Life is pretty good here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get started on questions. Um, so question number one is, what is the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification? Well, a pre-qual is a very loosey-goosey, I guess if you want to call it, uh, way of getting pre-approved. Okay. Typically, verbal information, you know, this is what I make, these are my debts, um, you know, and my credit scores are great, you know, without any validation, typically, yeah. a little validation. Uh, that is not something I ever do, uh, by the way, here, or at least the way I operate. It's full approval or nothing. So a client, you know, will either set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting here with me in the office or a telephone slash Zoom interview, a uh, three-way call or whatever it may be with whoever's involved in the loan. Mm -hmm. We will do a full application. We will run credit. We will get their W-2s, pay stubs, taxes, whatever it may be that we need for their particular file, validate everything so that that way when we issue a pre-approval letter, it sticks. It's, you know, it's a done deal. From there two things um you're available all the time right you're not just a nice I, yeah guy. my age is now i'm here every weekend pretty much saturday or sunday or both i do try to take one day off here and there but uh yeah i mean i'm, I'm pretty much here this is my my second home as you may call it is right here yeah. in this office and um, that's what i love about what you do especially I, I, I many many years ago i realized that a when i'm in the office here on the weekends a, nobody's here to bother me, which is a good thing in terms of staff and everything else. But B, you know, the clients, you know, especially when they have children and, and events and working during the week, and especially even now more so with, you know, all the COVID uh, <clears throat> situation going on and more at home um, shenanigans, if you want to call that, with kids and work and everything else, it really works out great on a Saturday or Sunday when I, when I say, hey, you know, by the way, this weekend I'm going to be here. And if you'd like to come in there, they almost light up. They're like, oh, my God, yeah. that's great. Makes it so much and easier. we're working weekends, so when you and yeah, and I feel and I almost feel like hey, you guys are out there, you know, showing up houses, holding them open, setting up, you know, all, all your appointments. So why not be here and, and be available? So yeah, much love that. Um, awesome. Another thing was pre-approvals are very crucial today, especially even if you want to go and see a home. Um, sellers are not allowing non-qualified buyers into the home to look. So. Definitely pre-approval is your first step. So number two is, does it cost anyone to get pre-approved? It shouldn't. Uh, I know some lenders may charge for a credit report or some kind of small admin fee, but no, it's completely free to come in and have your consultation, run your credit, look at all your options, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That, there is no charge for that. Okay, awesome. Um, question number three would be how to get started what is what are the docs required and the minimum credit score well let's take that last question minimum credit score uh with government loans they go the lowest 580 uh to 600 is sort of the lowest bucket that they have okay uh, and it goes up from there um but uh, i definitely would say that one of the things that we do here is if your credit score for some reason um isn't quite up to par where you think it should be uh, a lot of times just by looking at your credit and uh, giving you, you know, a little bit of advice and direction, we can do what's called the rapid rescore. Uh, you may have to pay off a couple things here and there and do some tweaks that we may recommend. And then we will go ahead and uh, call our credit company. They will rescore you. It typically takes between five to seven days, working days to get that done, nice. but I've seen some great results, you know, uh, and success on that. So that's something that, you know, case by case we can advise you on. Uh, and then in terms of the documentation, uh, it's typically pretty simple. Uh, it's almost like two, two, and two. So two years of your latest <clears throat> W-2s or taxes, 
two of your most current pay stubs and two of your most current bank statements uh, where your assets are. And that's pretty much all we need to get started. Okay. Um, question number four, what are closing costs and how much should I expect? Closing costs, I mean, they do have some variance. Um, one of the things that I think sometimes gets lumped together uh, by not just agents, also clients, is they lump together the closing costs and the impound account if they're going to have one. And in a lot of cases, people do want it or are going to have it. An impound account or an escrow account is the reserve account for taxes and insurance, which means that you have taxes and insurance included in your payments. But that is not a closing cost. So, but they do get lumped together. But I would say, uh, overall, between one and a half to two percent of your sales price, if you budget or at least mentally make note of that, that's typically where the closing costs and impound account typically are. They fall in line with that that number. All right. right there. Perfect. And last question: What are some of the do's and don'ts of home loans, kind of while you're in escrow and after you've gotten pre-approved? Well, after you've gotten pre-approved, I would say that's where. Do not go buy cars or any kind of big ticket items that go on your credit report because that could have an impact on you. Uh, also, because it's happened many times, uh, if you're going to make a job change of some sort, it's nice to keep us informed on what is happening because I have had clients that go into escrow and we call to verify their employment and they're no longer there in the middle of a transaction. Now, the good news is they got a better job that pays them better, so it worked out well, but they sort of felt like, you know, it wasn't important to say something to us about that situation. Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Just keep it clean. Keep it simple until you actually, you know, buy your home, close your home to make sure you get all the way to closed. And then, yeah, you know, if you need to buy certain things or if you need to go get a car because yours, you know, lease is up or your you know, car is breaking down or whatever, maybe then wait, wait till after you close your, your uh, home and then go. And that there. does include furniture. <laughs> Yes, don't go run up a, a credit card or get a new credit line with a furniture store. Uh, do not do any of that until after you close and yeah. then you're fine. Cool. Well, thank you so much for answering those questions, Fernando. I will leave your information on the screen and down below. And if anyone Perfect. has any more questions, feel free to comment and I'm sure we'll have you back again. Thank you guys. Thank you, Nicolette. Thank you.